I'm here in the Fremantle studio of Clyde McGill in Western Australia and my first question is can you tell us a little bit about uh, your the development of your work to this particular point? Um, I think I've always been interested in um, as a kind of background if you like uh, Kind of injustice, I suppose. You know, social, cultural places that are divided um, without really, uh, without due cause. You know, that that kind of thing. So, so really, that's it. That's the that's the practice. You know, and it and it it has its sort of show ups, if you like, in uh, borders, like in national borders, the way we. Um, the way that's developed in, around the world, really, and the way borders, I suppose, in a globalised world or a postmodern world, or maybe that's the key for modernism. Um, maybe it's modernism's fault. But um, the idea that we drew borders on the map and we continually draw them on the map, at least um, philosophically, politically, and then we say, you can go here, but you can't go there, regardless of whether you actually come from there or stay there or whatever. So that sort of stuff, and Australia is a good example of it, but of course there's many Australia, uh, many examples around the world now. So I've been working with that. I'm interested in the Australian narrative, if it's not the meta-narrative, but the tiny, the mini-narratives that go on um, yeah. about that, because there's enough of it within Australia without sort of dealing with the outside borders. So that really. It's an interesting time as well, I think, to think about borders because, you know, like you said, um, with modernity, the, the idea of the nation state um, really only congeals in the last 200, 250 years. Yeah. And now we're in a Australia's time Australia's lifetime. Yeah. Kind yeah. of thing in terms of white Australia, invaded Australia, you know? Yeah. 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 And I think we live in an interesting time because. Uh, it seemed like there was a, a di dissolution of national borders um, in the last sort of 20, 30 years, particularly with things like the EU and, um, you know, yet yeah, recently, the things like the Brexit vote and other yeah. things that have happened with the Syrian refugee crisis in Europe, yeah. borders have started to be reinforced. Yeah, exactly. Schengen was such a, such a deal. Yeah. And now Schengen is kind of like, you know, it, who knows where Qing it'll go in the next 50 years, uh, even in the next 10 years, even in the next five years, maybe. So has so, your work been covering the, this notion to do with borders over that span of time when things have changed? Oh uh, yeah, I've been working with borders for probably about 10 years. Some people say I should move on. <laughs> it's always a thing when you're an artist, isn't it? Like, when do you move on? When do you, how do you kind of, you know, it's a bit like it's individual artworks, when do you finish them? When are they finished? You know, you never quite know. Yeah. Well, what was the impetus for starting to look at borders 10 years ago? Oh, I think just that. I grew up in a family that um, was interested in justice. Uh, and so I was kind of, some of that was embedded, I suppose. Yeah, so I was just there. I have a brother who works, uh, still works vaguely in that area. Yes, just that I think, um, and with with the the idea of privilege and who has privilege, who doesn't have privilege, why not? And it's a very specific uh, Australian sort of angle that you take. It does have, yeah. Although I, you know, I lived in New York for a year not so long ago, and um, so of course there, the you know the whole. I don't know, I think in a sense you can say that the US in fact is a border between Mexico and Mexico and Canada, you know. The, if a border border now is not a line, we know that, it's a it's a gap kind of thing. And um, so you know, there I I got I had lots of, you know, work to do with that kind of stuff. So that probably changed my view, you know, made it a bit more global. 
Um, but yeah, I kind of, well, I am Australian, and I think it is sort of interesting to work in our own, in our own place. I think and place is, a, um, is an interesting offshoot of, of it. So I work a bit with place, and, and God forbid, a little bit of landscape, even. A lot. <laughs> are, you, are you originally from uh, Western Australia? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm from, um, I've been here a long time now. But I'm from, I grew up in uh, North Queensland and the Northern Territory. Yeah. And worked in the Northern Territory as a, as a youngster on cattle stations. And things. So tell me a bit about your, your background, what, um, you know, uh, in terms of the art education and then getting actually into uh, being a practicing artist. Um, I went back, to, I really, this is like um, another life for me in a sense. I, yeah. I, I went back to, um, I went to art school, having always had an interest in a bit of making a bit of art, um, but I went to art school when I was uh, 50, a bit over 50. So, uh, and I went, and I really wanted to go to art school, you know, it was... Yeah, uh, what were you doing before then? Well, I was, um, um, I worked in mustering camps for quite a long time yeah. and, and then I went, I didn't have any education because I left school really early, I was like 15 when I left school. Yeah. Then I, so, I, then I decided that, a guy came and told me one night, I, to, you know, that I was wasting my time in the bush and why don't I go to university. So I went to, sorry, to make it so long, but I went to, and did better, veterinary science and I, but I had to go and do my matriculation first because I didn't yeah. have any so I did that so I did that and then work had a career as a veterinarian yeah yeah, yeah. oh wow and then I and, and I didn't I love being a vet yeah I loved all my careers like yeah. it's been great but um, I really wanted to do it and I kind of got to 50 and I thought oh well if I don't do it and I've been a veterinarian practicing vet then for 20 years so nearly 20 years I thought, well, I'll go do it. So I did, I went, yeah. And then I did, uh, and, uh, and then I did the usual track, really. I did honours. Uh, um, uh, got was, a, was this in uh, Perth? Yeah, yeah, Curtin, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. And then I got a, uh, as it happened, I got a Fulbright scholarship and went to the US for a year. Yeah. In fine art or art, performing art, because performance is quite a part of my practice. So in, Visual and Performing Art, um, I got the Fulbright for that. Then I came back and did a PhD at RMIT for, for the last, and I finished that a couple of years ago. Mm. You can edit that as much as you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's really interesting. And, no, seriously, I think one of the really interesting things about, about your career path is that uh, so many artists, you know, leave school, go to uni, I, I did exactly this, leave school, went to uni, right. took a year out in between undergrad and PhD, but pretty much it was like right away from high school right. to PhD. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. um, and yeah, I, I, I find that, you know, some of the most interesting artists that I talk to are those people who have um, come to, uh, you know, come to kind of professional art practice actually quite late in their career. Yeah. I think you bring some, I think you bring something to it. I think you bring something different to it. It's maybe it's just life experience, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. I feel like I did I've almost lived every part of my life back to front, really. You yeah. know, because I left school, I didn't go to school properly. Yeah. Uh, my mother homeschooled us and we had it so in many ways. But I agree. I think there's stuff to kind of draw on maybe. I, you know? literally draw up. But the stuff to experiences you have and people you met and I mean they're really important part of my work, that that experience. Yeah. And I'm writing writing's quite a big part of my practice as well and and that's certainly part of that, you know. It's, yeah. It's kind of tell, tell me a bit more about that, about the role of writing in your practice. Well, I'm just writing my first book. I mean I've read I just finished my first book. My wife's typed it for me. 
I was proofreading it because I read it longhand because I wanted the experience as an artist of yeah. writing it as a drawing. Yeah. So I wrote it and then I got to like, I had to look up how long a book is. Because <laughs> <laughs> how long's a book? You know, I, I, know, wrote, yeah. I wrote my PhD thesis, you know, and you write 50 or 60,000 words or something, yeah. but, but how does that relate to a book? So I had looked up, I looked up and Ah, oh, so books kind of between 70,000 and 90,000 words, your average book. Yeah. You know? So when you say book, are you talking about a novel? No, no it's not a novel. Are you, is it a... Are you going to let me... <laughs> this is like a guessing, this? a guessing game. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's, uh, yeah. I don't know, it's a... Uh, um, it's a uh, story. Okay. And did, when... Where did you settle out in terms of the words, Kings? Sorry? Where did you settle out in terms of the word Kings? Well, I got to 70,000 words. Yeah. And because I was writing it each morning, you know, because I, I don't know about you, but for me, I have a very creative, well, I don't know about very creative, but the most creative part of my day is that first couple of hours yeah. you know, in the morning. Yeah. So I wrote it each morning. And I got to 70,000 words, and I don't know if it's finished now, but I thought, oh, that's good, I can stop. Not that I wanted to stop, but I feel like I've really missed it. <laughs> yeah. How, how long did it take you to do 70,000 words though? About six months. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, I bet your, uh, your dissertation for your PhD took a lot longer and it's shorter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, my PhD dissertation is a whole bunch of stories as well. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, but, so evidently then... But yeah, it's not a, this is not a PhD. Yeah. So evidently that narrative uh, plays a really important part in your, in it your does. practice and it does. that includes and writing and visual writing. Yeah, and those narratives kind of running along and then they produce stuff, yeah. you know, and I watch them mostly. <laughs> so do you see your writing, for instance, this, uh, this piece that you've just written, do you see that as being, uh, or how, let me ask this a different way, how do you see that in relation to your visual practice? Oh, it's, it's it's really uh, the core, really. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I, what cores I have in my practice. You know the way you hear people say, "Oh, well, that's the important part of my practice," which is great, you know. But yeah. mine, I think, probably drawing, performance, and writing are the cores. Even though sometimes, and I always think of myself as writing the work into existence. You know, so when I'm writing, what I'm actually doing is writing that work into existence. You know, and, and, it, and that's what happens. Like, it's like magic. So, so <laughs> surprising. Tell me how... I don't know if it's like magic, but it's surprising anyway. It surprises me. <laughs> so, tell me uh, how performance that figures in with, uh, with the writing and the drawing aspects of your practice. Um, well, the performance... Um, um, Oh, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you differently. Um, tell me about one of your performances, not the most recent one that you're doing for Fremantle, but tell me about uh, one of your recent performances and how that might relate to the ideas that you're dealing with in writing and drawing. Um, well, a performance that was on, that was selected here, uh, a tiny little performance, and it, um, mostly they have a little narrative as usual. Um, and I set uh, big dingo traps in the dark around the stage um, with sound, you know, microphones attached to my feet and stuff. And then I set them off. So it was kind of a bit scary um, and stuff. So like it was. We're, we're, who's trapping who, you know, that sort of stuff. So it has, they have little bits like that and then they have bigger bits. So when they are burning, the, when they were burning the, the fishing boats in Darwin, that was when I first kind of started actively doing work and I went and sang. I, I couldn't get into where they were burning the boats in the Navy yard in Darwin. This is when yeah. they used to burn them on land. Yeah. So I stood at the gate and sang, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, you know. And they came with their guns behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so stuff like that. So you, you're, yeah, so you're obviously recording there, your video recording. Yeah, this. I put the video up on the roof of the car on the other side of the road and yeah, did that. So a lot of the time they're just silly little things. Yeah. yeah. 
So there is a, a kind of a provocative element to, I mean, in terms of challenging border authorities as well in your book. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. I think, I think, I think art without risk is a bit, doesn't sort of work for me. Mm. It has to have a bit of risk, even if it's personal risk or, you know, authoritarian risk or something. Mm. Risk is really important. Do, do, uh, do you find, again, let me ask this differently. <laughs> um, so your, your, work is, your work is obviously political. Um, tell me about how you negotiate the, the risk then of it becoming didactic. Yeah, yeah, Oof. that's a bad question. That's the right question to ask because it's a terrible dilemma a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, the last thing I want it to be is didactic and I'm working with a new exhibition at the moment which is some way away, yeah, but I've done a lot of the work for it. And yeah, it's it's a it's an issue. It's a very political piece, and it's and you really want to say something, you know. You want to say this is not right, or this is this, you know, this does at least this doesn't work, you know, in our society. But but you know that's that's not what you really want to say. You you know you want to say that maybe, but you want to leave people with some little disturbance that is like oh. You know, or some little realization, but yeah, you don't want to kind of spell it out. Mm. So, yeah, it's um, it's a thing. Recently, I've been using, I've been working with the audience in an interactive way, yeah. and that takes that for me uh, answers that question a bit because the audience asks the question of me sometimes or of themselves as we make the work. And that's and I've been working with sound too, and I and I haven't worked with sound until the last year or so, and um, and I think that that sort of has helped too. In what, what way is the sound helped? Do you think? Well, it's it's another um, it's another area. It's interesting because you don't need to ask the question you know you can actually and i know that musicians know this right but i'm i'm not a musician yeah um so musicians know this so it's but as a visual artist um you can make you can do stuff with sound you can set a scene you can do that kind of stuff um you can ask a question you know with it which you can't do with you know you can do it with visual art as well but sound is a great adjunct to that, or it's a great another kind of string to my bow, if you like. Is it? Is it because it's more, um, or it can be more abstract? Oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And I think taking taking the questions into the abstract, as long as you don't then get lost in the abstract <laughs> with <laughs> them, <laughs> and you finish out just with this big mush, and you haven't really said what you want to say, you know? um, which is a yeah, I think it's a, it's a danger for me, anyway. I suppose it's a bit like that tension between you know being didactic and not, and you know the opposite of obviously being didactic is that being so sort of obscure that you yeah. know, any kind of you know yeah. political meaning in your work yeah. then is lost. I and mean, I think that it's a similar tension as well with uh, particularly when you work with visual material of the abstraction becomes too yeah you know. Yeah. Too vague, too too impermeable. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you know that, don't you? You know, you know when it's gone. When you when it, yeah. when you've pushed it back too much, or you've said, you've asked the question, but then you've kind of covered it up three times. You know the. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So it's 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 really a matter of trying to find. It's a big issue this between... being an artist, isn't it? What's that? It's a big issue this being an artist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things to think about. Sorry, go. <laughs> <laughs>